Good morning, readers. Well, today is the launch of Custard Cream Conspiracy. This is the 24th installment in the delicious Auntie Clem's Bakery Culinary Cozy Mystery Series. If you've been following Erin Price's adventures at Bald Eagle Falls, you're in for a treat. You won't want to miss this new episode filled with mystery, romance, and gluten-free baking. If you think it's all been done in this series already, think again. Kim says, shattered dreams and custard creams. Don't forget to grab a box of tissues when you settle in for this one. This modern Shakespearean tragedy brings with it a tsunami of emotions previously unexplored in the series. Don't leave this one on your TBR pile. Open the book and start reading. This is a reading from Custard Cream Conspiracy, book number 24 in the Auntie Clem's Bakery series. And I apologize if it's at all glitchy today. I'm recovering from a cold and uh, occasionally have to stop to cough. Okay. It was a perfectly normal day until Erin was bowled right off her feet. She'd finished her shift at Auntie Clem's Bakery and was on her way over to the general store to see Mary Lou about some more jam. The Jam Lady Jams were always a good upsell to go with her handcrafted gluten-free breads, and she felt good about supporting a friend in the community as well. It was a win-win-win. Good for her and her business, good for Mary Lou and her family, and good for the customers who went home with a yeasty, delicious loaf of bakery fresh bread and a jewel-toned jar of blueberry jam. Erin had been hoping that the jam lady, whose identity was known only to a very select group of people in Bald Eagle Falls, would be able to start making jam again. She'd been excited to receive part of the first batch produced after the jam lady's lengthy convalescence. Maybe Erin's head was in the clouds as she dreamed of a taste of the sweet blueberry preserve and wasn't watching to see where she was going. But Bald Eagle Falls was a sleepy little town and she didn't usually have to worry about being run over. It wasn't the big city, and it wasn't like she was walking on the road. She should have been safe from harm on the sidewalk. And it wasn't a car. They all stayed on the street where they were supposed to, and when Erin was blasted from behind, she had no idea, to begin with, what had happened. One minute she was on her feet, and the next she was slammed into the very solid wall of the building next to her. It felt like being hit by a truck. She was hit in the back, and then her face and head hit the wall, followed by the rest of her body. She was too startled to even shout out in surprise. She just went down in a heap. Someone else was there, swearing and tangled up with her, their legs flailing to separate and get a purchase on solid ground again. Aaron's head hit a solid surface again, this time the back of her head on the pavement. Not really hard, but hard enough that it hurt. A hoarse voice swore at her, or maybe the other party was just upset by the collision and was hurt himself or herself. Erin couldn't really determine the gender to assign to the low growl. She saw a flash of black cloth as the other person involved in the accident extricated himself and then heard an electric whir. Then she was by herself on the sidewalk. She was sweating, though it wasn't as hot as it had been lately. Her clothes were sticking to her in the warm Tennessee air. Her purse had been upset, items scattered across the pavement. Erin gathered the bits and pieces together in a daze, jamming them back into the cavernous safety of her shoulder bag, her planner, her sunglasses, a compact, feminine items, several pens, her keychain. Erin, are you okay? Mary Lou hurried up to Erin. Erin had never seen Mary Lou in a hurry or disarray before. Mary Lou was always perfectly groomed and manicured, every line of her shirt and pants lying exactly as it should without a wrinkle. Her short, blonde-turned gray hair coiffed and styled to perfection. She didn't rush or get upset, even when her personal and family life had been in shambles. I saw it all through the window, Mary Lou told Erin, reaching down to her and helping her to her feet. She peered into Erin's face worriedly. Those contraptions should be banned. I can't believe they're allowed on our sidewalks. Mary Lou handed Erin her planner, which she jammed into her shoulder bag. What contraptions? Erin asked vaguely, looking around. Everything seemed slowed down and weirdly out of place, like she was out of step with the rest of the world. Electric scooters, they're all over the city now, part of the whole trend to make the city walkable. 
How is it walkable when you could be mown down by one of those things at any moment? Are you okay, Aaron? Yes. Yes, fine, Aaron murmured. She looked around herself. Is that what it was? A scooter? I don't know why anyone would go down the sidewalk that fast. Even if they're allowed, there should be some kind of regulation of the things. Speed limits, yielding to pedestrians. Mary Lou shook her head. It's all this tourist traffic. People just don't know how to behave in a small town. How to slow down. Aaron supposed that she was partly responsible for the increase in tourist traffic. Ever since Gerald Montgomery had died of an allergic reaction to one of Aaron's muffins, his fans and followers had been traipsing to Bald Eagle Falls to try out the breakfast muffin for themselves. The steady stream of visitors had slowed, but there was still a lot of people in Bald Eagle Falls who Aaron didn't know, and who didn't know the town or its unwritten rules. Sorry, she apologized to Mary Lou. She straightened her shirt and ran her fingers through her short, dark hair to smooth it back neatly into place. She probably looked like a mess. She looked at her wet fingers, sticky with blood. You're hurt, Mary Lou observed. Here, sit back down. She helped Aaron to sit on the curb, ignoring her protestations that she was fine. Where's Vic? Where's Terry? Aaron shook her head. She usually drove with Vic, the few blocks from the bakery to the house she had inherited from Clementine. But Vic had only put in half a day and had gone into the city with Willie for a doctor's appointment. Terry, her handsome cop boyfriend, was probably out walking a beat as usual, with K-9, his German shepherd, at his side. I'm fine, Aaron told Mary Lou. I don't think it's anything. I'll just wash up when I get home. You hit your face, too. I saw when he ran you down. Why would anyone be going so fast on the sidewalk? The police car gave a short whir of its siren and pulled up next to where Aaron was sitting on the curb. Did you see what direction he went? Stainer demanded, rolling down the passenger side window to talk to them. That way, Mary Lou motioned in the direction the scooter rider had taken off in. I think he turned right onto first. Stainer pulled away again with a screech of tires. Aaron stared after him, still feeling stunned from the collision. She'd expected him to stop to help, to see how she was, sitting there bleeding on the curb. Aaron supposed that as a cop it was important for Stainer to see if he could catch the perpetrator, but it seemed like he should at least make sure Aaron was okay first. Maybe he'd assumed that since Mary Lou was there, she could take, of any, she could take care of anything Aaron needed and he didn't have to stop. <clears throat> Mary Lou muttered something under her breath that Aaron suspected was not too complimentary. He's not the best with people, Aaron commented, putting her hands, in, putting her face in her hands and her elbows on her knees to steady herself. In that position, she felt stable and wouldn't just fall over at the slightest breeze. Officer Piper, from, Mary's, from Mary Lou's tone of voice, Aaron knew that she was calling Terry on the phone, not seeing him approach so she didn't take her face out of her hands to look. Aaron was knocked down. She's hurt. I think you should come and see to her. I'm not hurt, Aaron mumbled. Just a little bruised. You'll scare him. She's scraped up, Mary Lou amended. It isn't an emergency, though with how hard that guy hit her, he sh she should probably see a doctor. Make sure there isn't anything serious. Aaron couldn't hear Terry's reply, but by Mary Lou's quick goodbye and no further conversation, Aaron assumed Terry had told her he was on his way. He could drive Aaron home, and then she could lie down until she felt less shaky. Custard Cream Conspiracy is book 24 in the Auntie Clem Bakery series. And as with the rest of the books in the series, it can be read as a standalone. If you are interested in catching up on the rest of this delicious series, then you can grab Gluten-Free Murder, the first book in the series, for free. Uh, you can check that out on my e-store at shop.pdworkman.com. If you need to read books 19 through 21, you can get those uh, all together in one package. Um, again, you can get that at my web store and it's also available at the various retailers, uh, including Kobo Plus. If you want to get caught up on the full series, you can get 
all of books 1 through 21 plus two bonus short stories uh, for 50% off. Head on over to shop.pdworkman.com to get that great deal. Custard Cream, book number 24 in the Auntie Clem's Bakery Cozy Mystery Series. In the small town of Bald Eagle Falls, a stolen cookbook and the discovery of a box of old letters hold the key to an intriguing mystery. Join Erin Price, the owner of Auntie Clem's Bakery, and her team as they uncover long buried family secrets to solve a murder that spans generations. This captivating novel will keep you hooked until the very last page. Whisked away. Erin Price, the owner of Auntie Clem's Bakery, finds herself unexpectedly plunged into a new mystery that has her turning back the pages of time to uncover lost clues. Will she find the clues in the recipes in a stolen cookbook, in the photos and letters that have lain hidden for generations? With the help of her friends, Erin digs deeper to unearth long buried family secrets and find justice for a girl she never knew. Join Erin Price and her team on an intriguing new case as they uncover the truth behind a stolen cookbook and hidden letters. Get your copy of this captivating novel today and immerse yourself in a world of mystery, romance, and mouth-watering recipes. Like Baking Mysteries, Cats, Dogs, and Other Pets? Award-winning and USA Today best-selling author P.D. Workman brings readers back to small-town Bald Eagle Falls for another culinary cozy mystery to be solved by gluten-free baker Erin Price and her friends. Have your gluten-free cupcake and eat it too. Sink your teeth into this sweet treat now.